Hey guys, long time no see. Now in this video, I'm gonna show you some of the most beautiful houses in Yekaterinburg. Now, just so you understand, they don't make them like that anymore. And you'd be right assuming that they must have been built long time ago. And just for you to understand the realities of the time, let me give you a brief history of Yekaterinburg, how it got started. Well, it was founded in 1723, right around the time when Peter the Great who was involved in so many wars and he needed iron for his military. Now, having Sweden as your only supplier and at the same time having a war with Sweden did not help. Didn't help. Why did I have to repeat that? <laughs> so Peter the Great sent his men, Mr. Tatishup and Mr. Deganian, to find a perfect location for a metallurgical plant. And this is where Ekaterinburg is sitting today. Uh, they found this place by the river and they built a plant and with a new town they normally build a church so they built this church it's called the church of ascension it's the oldest church in Yekaterinburg. churches had to be the tallest buildings in town to be closer to god so that god would notice you and keep an eye on you this first palace we're going to take a look at is called haritonovsky palace or palace of haritonov and it's this one this first palace belonged to lev rostorguyev and he built it in 1794. I think Lev was a popular name at the time, right? You got Leo Tolstoy, Leo Rostorguyev. Okay, anyway, he built a house in 1794 and apparently had a little bit of money. He was a merchant, he was a wine and vodka merchant. He was also an old believer. Now, can you hear the church? Okay, so old believers at the time were targeted. So him and other fellow old believers had to hide in some secret chamber so that they could pray. Now let's take a look inside. Let's see if we can get through. <laughs> Welcome guys. I'm picking a lot coming through the door. I love to imagine uh, how they spent their time uh, walking here in the past. Yeah. They would have something like grand dinner. They would have some noble guests coming over, like, oh guys, it's dinner time. Let's go enjoy some dinner. Yeah, and, and uh, they look, like. They got, they got uh, cherry wow. trees. It's beautiful. Oh my god, they are lucky. Yeah. So tasty. Yeah. Just imagine, like, they doing. A bell here. A ball. Ball. Yeah. And lady in big dresses. So they're walking here. Sure, Lana. They had so much style. The columns, the windows. Uh, you know, I want to pick one berry. I don't think you should. Only one. Okay. This place is huge, huge. So beautiful. Do you want to live in the place like this? Yeah, I'm actually saving money to buy this place. The place is nice and you see it, but let's explore the park. We invite all of our subscribers here. Yeah, of course, we're gonna have a grand ball. In 1824, his son-in-law, Pyotr Haritonov inherited this place and he was a pretty wealthy guy and he expanded the place he added a pond which I'm gonna show you later he added uh, this huge garden and, and uh, some some more of these buildings now he owned a few factories and he was a gold miner but the bad thing about him he was notoriously cruel towards his serfs and you know serfs is the equivalent of American slaves you know so Russia had slaves as well they talk a lot about slavery in the US today. Well, every country had some form of slavery in one way or another. So Russia had serfs, that, that's an equivalent of slaves. Now he was so cruel towards his slaves that he was eventually put on trial and prosecuted and he was given a life sentence. I mean, just imagine how bad he must have been towards them so that a noble guy with a lot of money would be given a life sentence. Must have been, he must have done something really, really bad. So in 1837, he was uh, sent to to prison for life. Now in the Soviet days this place became a house of pioneers and today it operates as a children's 
art school. And the park is of course just a, a public park. So let's explore the park. Let's see what it's like. I have to pick another lock. How do you know about this entrance and exit? Uh, actually, I saw one guy do it, so kind of. Well, you're welcome. Wow. There's a funny story about this part. When, during the Civil War, when the White Army was clashing with the Red Army, and uh, this guy Kolchak, who was the leader of the White Army, he was coming to the city, about to take it. So Bolsheviks, they didn't want him to have all the alcohol in the city, and there was a winery right close to uh, this place. So they destroyed all the alcohol, full, uh, all the barrels full of alcohol. So it all poured into the street and eventually ended up in this pond. Now it was winter time, right? So this pond was covered with ice. And so all the alcohol, pure alcohol, was just uh, sitting on top of the ice. And uh, all the locals came here with the cups and bottles to uh, scoop up all the alcohol. And some were even drinking straight from the pond. So that's a funny story. Just picture Petro Kharitonov was sitting here just like I do and he was thinking life is good <laughs> but not for the serfs someone had to work hard for him to have it all Titanic what Ты нарисовал Титаник? Да. Классно. А что вы рисуете? Я? Ну, я не знаю, Я приближу. Смотрите отложение. Вот типа кусочек воды, если там вам видно, нет? Там типа вот эта вода, это да. типа, да, ну вы поняли. Все понятно. Короче, местный пейзаж. Да, местный пейзаж. А у вас? А она рисует мой пейзаж. А. Ну, надеюсь, авторские права не нарушает. Just finished the marathon. Man, it was hard. Здравствуйте. Are you feeding? I'm giving them some bread. Because I'm so generous, can't help it. Thanks to that gentleman, he gave me some bread. You want some more, buddy? Там еще одни. Ой, так много, очень. It's their lucky day. Как в болото превращается, я смотрю. Ну, в болото, его же не чистили. А также люди это, купались. Mm -hmm. ну, даже Андрей у меня друг. Здесь, говорит, мы вообще говорит, и рыбалка классная, рыбу ловили ага. и купались. Прям Но до да раньше, да? Да. да. Рыба здесь есть. Если говорю, чайки не, не уничтожат. Mm -hmm. Люди рыбачат, ходят, приходят, приходят, бывают. Как его зовут? Дмитрий. Слава. Очень приятно. Спасибо. Спасибо за хлеб. Я просто прихожу, кормлю их. Хорошее место, почему не прийти? Да. Да. Ладно, до свидания. Давайте вам удачи. Добро. Здравствуйте. А, здравствуйте.
Nice place, Lana. Nice place. It's almost downtown of Yekaterinburg and now it's a place where young people gathering and hanging out during the evening and watching to this church. You're young, so you're supposed to be here too, right? Right. I Let's am here. Look. All right. Nice, nice, nice. Right behind me is Sevastiano's house. Now the story of this house is it was built in the first half of the 19th century. Now Nikolai Sevastiano, he was just an ordinary mining uh, engineer, but he got extremely rich. He amassed a, a huge for fortune when he was supplying uh, military products to the front, from, from the Ural factories to the, to the front when the Crimean War was happening. So maybe some corruption was involved, you know, how can you afford a house like that? Uh, he was a pretty humble guy. He did not live in the house. He lived in a small house behind the house and he was renting the place. Now, funny story is that sometimes he would sit on a bench in front of this mansion and people would be passing by and he would ask them, do you like the house? They're like, yeah, it's a beautiful house. And he would say to them, do you know who it belongs to? They say, who? And he say, that's my house. Talk about being humble, right? Is this house the most recognizable? Yeah, this house is like the iconic uh, postcard, postcard picture of Yekaterinburg. You know, normally on postcards you would say this one and the church on the blood. You know, it's the most recognized and uh, the most beautiful building in Yekaterinburg, I think. Now, during the Soviet times, it was used as a union, uh, labor union place. And right now, nobody knows what it's used for. It's not a museum. You cannot access it because it's closed. Uh, during the, some time, it was the residency of Dmitry Medvedev when he was a, the president of Russia. And right now, it's just like a beautiful place, but you can only admire it from the outside. You cannot go inside. Okay, it's a beautiful evening. I hope you guys enjoy the tour. And maybe we'll do some more videos about the beautiful places of Ekaterinburg. Now let's go take a look at the city pond and what's happening. The place is busy today. Oh my god, what day is today? It's Friday, Friday night. 